According to one of the natives, we believed our dead went over there, turned white, and came back as spirits. That's how we explained the white man. Our own dead had returned. Today's episode is brought to you in part by HelloFresh Canada. Are you struggling to spice up dinner time? With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients with mouth-watering, seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in 30 minutes or less. With over 25 recipes to choose from each week, there's something for everyone to enjoy. All recipes are designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. For plant-powered people like me, there are fantastic options like sesame peanut noodles and veggie burrito bowls with charred corn and tomato salsa. Though the ghost of Frank and Tito would very much prefer some cheesy Mexican beef. Go to the link in today's show notes to get $80 off, including free shipping on HelloFresh, the number one meal kit. Welcome to the History Obscura reading room once again. I had a great time digging through the secret library this week and found something delightfully obscure to share with you. Once upon a time... In the 1920s, the large island of Papua New Guinea was inhabited by Australians along its coastal perimeter. Gold had been found there, but its resources dried up over time. That is when the Leahy brothers, from rural Queensland, went with patrol officer James Taylor to look for gold in the highlands. They spent four years exploring the highland region. The mountainous area was inhabited, according to the colonials, because the landscape was too treacherous to sustain a community. The interior of the giant island is comprised of a mountain chain that runs east to west. Crossing these mountains, is and was a daunting and dangerous task that makes for slow exploration. Daniel Leahy said, It was very, very hot when you ride up in the center. There was no way getting back, only the way you came. For about 90 miles, we had to walk to get to the place where we decided to cross the ranges. And then we had to climb up 9, 10, 11,000 feet. The reward in the end was when we looked down in the valleys below. It looked like big parkland, and it was quite obvious that there was a huge population because of the huge garden patches. They heard singing rising up to the top of the hills. Clearly, there were hundreds of thousands of highlanders in the center of the island. They lived in huts of timber and kunai grass, used stone tools, and fought with wooden spears and arrows. Just as the white settlers had been unaware of their existence, the Highlanders had no idea that anyone lived beyond the mountains. One man, who lived with one of the mountain tribes at the time, said, I was just a boy, already weaned from my mother's breast. I was with my father one day when I first saw a white man. I was so terrified I couldn't even look at him, and I cried. Another man said, I was only a kid when they came. We had just been defeated by our tribal enemies. We heard a strange story that a lightning had come. We thought these white men were lightning from the sky. People said, they are not of the living. They must be our ancestors from the place of the dead. We knew nothing then of the outside world, 
We thought we were the only living people. We believed our dead went away, turned white, and came back as spirits. The carriers had rucksacks on their shoulders, and our people said their wives must be in those bags, packed up inside. They wore red laplaps around their waist, and a bayonet at the side. And our men said, the women must not look. They must have had huge penises wound around their waists and hidden under the laplaps. When we saw their trousers on their bodies, and thought they must not have body waists in them, because they were wrapped up so neatly we wondered how the excreta would be passed. One of us hid one day and watched the white man excrete. He said their skin is very different but their shit smells just like ours. At first, there were friendly trades made between the two groups. New Guineans brought the Australian sweet potatoes and sugar cane, and were given shells, dates, and steel axes in return. The tribes people even helped the Leahys construct an airstrip for their prospecting plane, with hundreds of people enjoying the work with a sing-sing. The construction meant filling in some of the drainage ducts already dug for the gardens, but nobody minded. It was a joyful project. James Leahy recounted the time that the airstrip was finished, and he and his brothers tried to explain what was about to happen. They said that a bird would come out of the air and make a noise. I think the thing that struck them most of all was the fact that we could tell them we will sleep three nights, and out of the hill will come a bird, and this will fall down here and bring all these things, and out of its belly someone will get out. One man, who was a child at the time, told interviewers, My people said good things would fall from the sky, and so we helped with the work. The noise of the aircraft was too much to bear. When it first approached the strip, people ran away screaming, hid in the trees, and even dove into the nearby stream to escape. When it landed, those who remained witnessed the pilot emerge in a jumpsuit and white helmet. He had brought food and supplies, including a gramophone. Said one witness, They wound it up and told us to dance to its sound. We heard its cry and thought it was a box full of ghosts. That wasn't the only thing that caught their attention. A shining lid from a can of tuna was so exotic and mysterious, one boy went out of his way to steal it from the spirits. When he brought it home to his family, they were so impressed that the boy's father fastened it onto a new headdress. Unfortunately, Relations between the miners and the locals were not all friendly. According to one man, the initial confusion at seeing a white person soon turned to terror. We'd never seen such a thing. Did he come from the ground? Did he come from the sky? The water? We were confused. If we'd had any idea of him, we'd have known why he came. So we were confused. The white man thought our leader was going to attack, so he shot him. Daniel Leahy maintained that he and his colleagues and brothers never killed except to preserve their own lives. Nevertheless, over the course of several years in Papua New Guinea's interior, the prospectors shot and killed dozens of people. When members of local families were interviewed in the 1980s, they recalled their horror at the destructive power of the Leahy's rifles. One said, The white man accused us of stealing a lap lap. They came to fight us, but we stood our ground. The rifle fired. I saw nothing. Then, the blood sprouted out, and I was amazed. Two other men were shot dead. Their names were Kunduai and Mohog G. When I saw what the bullet had done to me, 
I fell down as well. Tribal leader Pingeta was among those shot and killed. His son recalled, some 50 years later, that his father had his head blown to pieces. The documentary of this meeting, which took place in the 1980s, narrated the first contact between the natives of the island and the Australian miners with the following words. A great day had arrived. The official opening is an occasion for celebration and festivities. You will understand how the native had benefited by these activities. A long time will elapse before he shakes off the shekels of barbarism, but his contact with the environment of white man not inevitably hastened his progress along the path to civilization. The Lehis remained in Papua New Guinea long after the discovery of more gold in the island's interior. They eventually employed native workers in their gold mines and paid them one pearl shell per month, or five cowrie shells per day, in exchange for the labor. Thanks for listening. Please support the podcast by sharing episode links, liking us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and giving us a nice review if your podcast app allows. You can also donate a dollar to the show at buymeacoffee.com or patreon.com forward slash history obscura. Good night. (laughs) 